A marksman can hit the 10 spot on a target at 50 yards 89% of the time. If he makes six shots, find the probability that he lands four of them in the 10 spot. All right, so I think this is binomial probability. Why? Well, of course it says find the probability. But then notice that it looks like they're asking for the probability that he lands four of them in the 10 spot, but he's making six shots. So what we have here is a subset of the total number of attempts here. A subset of those is going to turn out where he makes the target, makes the shot, and then two of them are gonna turn out to be misses. So four he makes, two he misses. If it's just regular multiplication rule of probability, then we would end up having all six shots end up in the bullseye, right? Or all six shots miss. But this idea of having a subset behave differently from the rest, that indicates binomial probability. Of course, I'm debating between binomial and multiplication rule because he's making six shots. If he makes more than one shot, then we usually are thinking of multiplication rule. So he's making six shots. Multiplication rule would normally be used for a problem like this, except for when we read this and we see that only a subset of them are going to go into the bullseye. There's going to be two that don't make it, four that do make it into the bullseye. At that point, I realize uh, a subset's behaving differently is probably the binomial probability formula. Again, to be sure of that, we have to check the conditions, right? Let's see. We have a fixed number of trials. There are only two possibilities for the problem for the outcome, either success or for failure, right? Success if he hits the 10 spot, failure if he misses it. Um, then we have a constant probability of success. He makes it 89% of the time. Um, independent trials, we assume that one shot would not be affected by another shot. That may act not actually be true, but I think it's a fair assumption. If you make it, you should be okay. And then finally, of course, we're going to count the number of successes, four of them landing in the 10 spot in this case. X should count the number of successes. Okay, now at that point, once we realize all of that, then the next step is to go ahead and write the probability statement. So we're going to say, okay, look, we're looking for the probability that x is equal to 4. This means he makes 4 shots out of his 6 attempts. Now, again, just to recap, the formula for binomial probability is n, c, x, right? And then we're going to have the probability of success to the x power, probability of failure to the n minus x power, right? Okay, now... If that's the case, then let's go ahead and fill this in the rest of the way. For the n, here we have six shots being made. We're going to choose four of them to be successes, right? Then the probability that he makes a shot is 0.89. That's the chance that he makes the shot correctly. There'll be four that land in the target zone, so that's 0.89 to the fourth power. The remaining leftover probability goes to the chance he misses. If he has an 89% chance of making the shot, he's got to have a 0.11 chance of missing. That's 11% chance of missing. If four of them went into the bullseye, the remaining two that are left over must have been misses, right? Four that make it, two that don't, that gives you a total of six shots. All right, so that's the formula. The rest is really just calculator work. So let's go ahead and try that out. We'll have six, math, choose four. So again, I'm using my calculator to do that. I'll show you how to do that by hand afterwards if you're curious. Then times 0.89 to the fourth power times 0.11 to the second power. And when we do that, we get basically 0.1138. So our answer is then 0.1138. Nine, let's say, and that's basically the same as 11.39%. So there's an 11.39% chance to hit four shots out of six. Okay, now just as a side note, if you're interested in how to evaluate something like this that is more doable by hand, just to recap, we've done this in other videos, but it'd be six factorial on the top, then on the bottom it's four factorial. And then from there, you take the difference of these two and put that down at the bottom as well. And then once you've done that, you want to go ahead and simplify that a little further. So you'll go ahead and say, well, uh, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. I'll stop there because I have a 4 factorial at the bottom. So I'll put that 4 factorial there. 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. Now what you can see is the 4 factorials will cancel, and you'll end up with 30, right, divided by 2, and that, of course, is 15. So your final answer then is 15. That's the number out here in front. And then once you have 15, you just multiply 15 by those quantities and you'll end up with the same answer.